What's up guys, Brayden here with Super ATV, and today we're gonna to be showing you how to install Super ATV's game loader on this Can-Am Defender, so let's get right to it. Now we're gonna grab our game loader and our mounting tubes. You're gonna have a left and a right. You wanna make sure that the notch is facing in and away from the Super ATV logo. So this one it would install just like this, so that way it's gonna mount on our cage. So we're gonna take it, slide it down to the edge of our table, just like so. We're gonna grab the biggest hardware out of the kit. You're gonna need a lock washer first on the bolt, then a flat washer. Take a 15 millimeter socket, and then these are gonna smash in between, just like this. Get it slid into our tube like so. Do this. line up just like that. So we'll just get it to where it's snugged up. We don't want to fully tighten it quite yet. And then you want to rotate this Super ATV to where it's sitting flush with the tube and facing towards the outside. I'm going to grab more hardware here and do the same thing. Get these lined up. Like our hardware. And I'm just going to snug these up here. I'm not going to fully tighten them yet. So it should look just like this. Now we're going to go to the opposite side and repeat the same steps. So again, just going to hand tighten these. Just like so. Just leave it just like that for now. Now we're going to grab our winch. Go ahead and spool some rope out. Whenever you're installing your winch, you wanna make sure that your power cable, which is right here, is going towards the side with the two holes. Once you have it installed, how your hardware started, go ahead and fully tighten it. Then we're gonna grab our box here. We're gonna go ahead and make our connection from our winch to the control box. Should be just like this. Then we're gonna grab one of our M6 bolts, slide it down through this hole here on the control box, and we're gonna line it up with our hole directly at the top. Then go to the bottom side with a nylock nut Go ahead and get that started. We'll go to this hole up here, which is the rearmost one. It's gonna be slotted. Take our M6 hardware, drop it in here. Another M6 nut, come to the bottom side. Tighten the hardware. Now we're going to take our connector and line it up with the slot, grab our M5 hardware, slide it through, grab an M5 nut, put it on the back side, And 
once we have the hardware started, we'll just go ahead and fully tighten it. Be careful when you're tightening this because it is a plastic connector there. Now we're going to slide our winch rope through our fair lead, line the fair lead up just like this. We're going to grab our M10s, slide the M10 through on both sides. Come to the back side, Let's get them started. and then we'll fully tighten the hardware. Now we'll just take our clamps that are provided in the kit. We're gonna slide one of them up here, about as high as it can go. We'll go ahead and snug this one down by hand. Slide it in roughly right about here. Kind of let this one hang down a little bit. Same thing for this one. We'll just get it kind of started somewhat on the cage and we can make adjustments once we start installing our game loader. And then we'll just do the same exact process for the opposite side. Now we're gonna install our winch hook to our winch rope. Slide it up just like that. Slide our pin through. And we're just gonna bend our pin away from itself. And grab your pull strap. Just like so. Now we're ready to install our game loader to the machine. All right, so now we're going to take the game loader, line it up with our upper clamp, grab our hardware, get our hardware started. Then once the hardware is started, we're going to slide our game loader up. Once you have your rack in place, you're just going to go ahead and fully tighten your upper clamp. and we'll line the rest of the clamps up. So once you have your other two clamps lined up, just go ahead and install your hardware. Once you have all the hardware started, you can go ahead and fully tighten all the hardware securing the rack to the cage. Now make sure your Super 8 TV logos are facing straight out. Tighten your 15 millimeter bolts to the side. Once all the hardware is fully tightened, go ahead and install the plugs. So every machine's gonna be a little bit different. Everybody's gonna have a different rear windshield. Everybody's gonna wanna route their wires a little bit differently. So what we're gonna show you as far as the wiring goes for the game loader rack is gonna be very basic on top level. We're not gonna show you a whole lot of tips and tricks on you know what length to cut it or where to run it. We're just gonna give you an idea of what you need to be doing here. So you're gonna grab the wire coming off of the control box. It's gonna have a black and a red. 
This is gonna go to a ground on the battery. This is gonna go to an all-time hot on the battery. So one thing you could do, is you could route it all along this cage here, drop it down, route it like this, you know, behind the seat belt, then follow the body panel all the way down to the floorboard. So I'm just gonna kinda show you that right now. Then you'd kinda drop it underneath the seat somewhat. Slide it down here in this region. I'm gonna pull some slack. Then you come down here to your battery box. Yours will have a quarter turn screw in it. Ours did not, it's been a part a bunch. So we'll come down here to the hot and the ground. Go ahead and loosen up our ground terminal on our battery. Slide it on just like so. Come over here to the hot side. Got it in. And then something that I'd probably do if I was fully installing this as far as you know permanently mounting it on a machine. I'll get my wire tucked to the length that I want it, route it up on top of the cage. So I'd route it all in the cage, get it all zip tied up and tied up tight. And then I would run my slack down into the battery box. And I'd figure out what length my wires need to be to where I don't have a bunch of excess tucked in behind the battery. I'd cut the wire down to size. You know, if you're not comfortable with that, it's perfectly okay to take your slack and tuck it in here. And then I would make my connections. But again, Every machine's a little bit differently. Today, we're just gonna show you how it needs to be wired up in order to make it function. We're not gonna show you exactly how you need to do it on your specific machine with your specific accessories. So, we're just gonna go ahead and tighten these down. Again, just gonna kinda take my excess for now and just tuck it back, not doing a full install. So now we're gonna need to remove this panel on the floorboard. So to remove this panel, you have a couple push pins. We, have, we do have a cab heater installed on our machine, so that's gonna make it a little bit more difficult for us to route wires, um, just because we have heater hoses and everything else running up through there. So we're not gonna be able to show you exactly how it's gonna be on your machine unless you have a cab heater installed, then it'll be very similar. So we're gonna take our push pins out, slide this panel out, and then we're gonna grab our keyed on source harness off of the winch itself and run it down the same way that we ran our hot and ground Harness, and then we're going to route it up to the dash. So I'm going to grab that and grab some tools to get those push pins out. All right, so sometimes these push pins be, can be hard to get to with a push pin removal tool here. So what I like to do is just take flathead, work on each side of it, and just kind of leverage them up. There'll be three. This machine here has been apart quite a few times, so it is missing one right here, but you should have three in your machine. Remove these push pins. I'll try them right up here to keep them out of the way. Grab this panel slide it out of the way, remove it from the machine. And then here's our keyed on source harness. We just ran that down the same way that we ran our hot and ground. So here's where it gets kind of tricky with us having a cab heater. So typically you wouldn't have all these heater hoses in here and you can kind of fish a wire down and grab a hold of it. Um, in our situation, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult than just fishing a wire down to get to it. So. What I'm going to try to do is go all the way up here behind the lower dash, feed a wire down, grab a hold of it, and try to pull my connection up. If I can't, then what we'll probably end up having to do is remove the lower dash, and then it opens it up real wide to where you can just slide right in there no problem and route your wires up. So we're going to try that, but what we're going to show you here real quick is where you need to get your wire to. So come right here to your center console, remove this panel. It just pops off nice and easy. And this is the area that we're looking for. So once we get our wires up into this area, we're just gonna plug them right in and I'll show you that connection now. 
So once you have your connector ran all the way up here and behind the panel and the dash, you're gonna grab your adapter out of the kit, plug it in, make sure it snaps. And as you can see, it has one eyelet here. So on the Can-Ams, there is a keyed on hot power source right here. So we'll come in, remove that nut, and then we will take our wire to the game loader, slide it on, and then just reinstall our nut and fully tighten it. Just like so. So once we've done this, again, you can cut this harness down, you can trim it the length, whatever you need to do. That's perfectly fine. If you wanted to, you don't even have to use the adapter. If you wanted to cut this wire to length, you can cut it off here, put an eyelet on it and connect it to that Keton power source. We just make this to where you can plug it in with the adapter and made this harness here for you if you weren't comfortable with making any kind of connections or cutting a harness down. So this is just a Keton source wire. It needs to be connected to this Keton source stud right here behind the control panel where you have your key switch, four wheel drive, diff lock, cigarette outlet. You literally just grab a hold of this, pop it off, drop it down out of the way. Make sure you pull your harness up here. Like I said, plug it in, hook it onto that keyed on source. So now what you would need to do with all of your wiring, you would need to tidy it all up. You don't want to let it all hang and droop down like this. This is unacceptable. So you would want to kind of take it. And when we talk about cleaning wire up, you don't want to take it and fold it over real tight like this and then zip tie it real tight. What I like to do is make a nice, you know, loop about like that and then just keep rolling it. So you just keep rolling wire up to it, making sure you keep nice loops. And then I would throw one zip tie in the center here, but I still want to be able to move these wires. We're just keeping them from falling all over the place. We're not cinching them down. And then I'd tie it up out of the way in a nice secure location to where I know it's not going to make contact with the shifter or brake pedal or anything like that. You don't want it falling down out of the dash. So now we're going to go back to the back of the game loader, make our final connections, and then we'll show you how this works. So we're going to grab this white connector here route it around the back side of the game loader and connect it to this white connector coming off of the control box. It's kind of hard for you all to see where it plugs in at, but I will show you once I get it plugged in. So as you can see, it's right here. It just sits back in behind the game loader. So here's our connector. It's going to go right into the connector on the side that we previously installed. There's a free spool knob in here, so you can have it on free spool or you can lock it in. Just make sure when you're trying to pull something in your bed, it's locked in. Now we're going to hit our key to the on position. I'm going to show you guys this game loader in action. So we're in the on position. there you go. Once you have your game or whatever you're trying to load in your bed loaded up, you just unplug your connector or your controller and then put your cover on the connection here on the side. Then you just take this, throw it in your glove box. If you have a toolbox mounted in the bed, wherever you want to store this, just make sure it's in a safe location that you don't lose it. Now you just need to go through, tidy all your wires up, make sure everything's fully tightened, it's adjusted correctly. And that's all there is to it to install Super ATV's game loader rack on this Can-Am Defender. Be sure to check the description below to pick yours up today. And while you're there, drop a like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.